So this is a recording of the flower duet that I did for Natalie's ContraPoints and although this was uh, recorded at uh, 48 kHz, uh, before it got as far as the recording stage, uh, pretty much every instrument in here went through a BBD, a Bucket Brigade device, and this works as a kind of analog delay that's kind of pretending to be digital. Uh, it consists of thousands, I think it's 4096 uh, capacitors and so the signal goes into the first one which passes on to the second one and the third one until 4096 later it pops out the other end uh, a few, uh, well, a, a fraction of a second later. It's not quite as long a delay as I'd like it to be. And there's... It's very much like a sampler with no memory, so the sound goes in and then it comes back out again uh, a short while later. But the way it works is kind of halfway between being analog and digital. It's analog in the sense that um, how far uh, in any direction the signal is. First of all, I guess we need to backtrack a bit. Uh, in terms of sound, what you're doing is you're moving a speaker cone backwards and forwards so many times every second, uh, from about 20 times a second to 20,000 times, that's what we can hear. And when you're digitizing it, uh, at the sample rate, say 32 kHz, 32,000 times a second, what you'll do is you'll just uh, make a note of what position the speaker's in and you'll just save that as a number, you'll write that down. And then when it comes time to play it back again, at the exact same speed, uh, you'll be moving the speaker to that position. With the low-pass filter, it makes it a smooth journey from one to the next, so it's not like a staircase, it's not doing that, it's doing that. And it sounds just like the original recording. Now with the BBD, uh, in terms of what position the speaker is in, that's still continuous. It's not rounded off to the nearest number, it's completely continuous. So there's uh, an unlimited number of very slightly different place positions. It can be anywhere in between, it doesn't have to quantize to like the next closest one, it goes to exactly the right one. So in terms of where the speaker is placed, it's completely continuous and analog. But in terms of how often you update where the speaker is, it's very much a digital style process. It will update, bang on the clock, a certain number of thousand times a second. And you can see here, uh, this is the bleed through from the clock because the Dopers BBD is very cheap and nasty and I like the sound of it, but um, you can hear the clock. So this is, uh, I think it's going to be half the sample rate. It's analog though, so there's no specific uh, speed it's at. You can use an op to just change the speed live. And when you do, it slows it down and speeds it up. And this is the bit of electronics saying, OK, we're going to capture another uh, sample now. We're going to capture another sample. And as it does so, you can actually hear some part of the circuitry flipping back and forth and making this here bit of noise. This comes across as a high pitched whine that we do not want and I go to great lengths afterwards to uh, use a notch filter to try and get rid of it again. Uh, evidently I did not do that well enough because it's still here in the final recording which I did not think was the case so that's my fault. 16 kilohertz is the highest frequency it can record at that speed and also uh, anything above that is going to be the reflection of what's beneath it. So that thing that audio files complain about, this BBD actually does do that. Uh, so where you've got this uh, sound beneath it, for instance, you can see it's being reflected above it. So all the sounds that are there are just copied across in the other direction. So here are the upside down sounds that aren't supposed to be there. So anything here is going to sound like a faint but just about audible uh, upside down out of tune version of whatever's here. So. This kind of thing is why I don't like the BBD because you've got the bleed through from the clock, you've got quite a bit of background noise here. Um, 
it sounds really nice the way it, it kind of smears and copies and does weird things to the sounds but in addition it does go a bit overboard so as much as I like using the BBD and it's a weird quirky sound I have to be really careful with it because it will add a lot of noise it will add weird high pitched whining frequencies and generally clients will not necessarily like it because it can sound quite unprofessional it's weird and quirky and good it sounds like Delio Dobie Shear I like that about it but it is messy and rough and not really um, an ideal kind of thing so you really only get away with using this with uh, clients or uh, end user customer fan type people who uh, are quite forgiving in terms of letting you have this weird quirky sound that's not neat and tidy it's, it's very rough around the edges. Uh, this is another track of mine, The Darkest Day. This is the BBD again. So you can hear the clock bleed through all the way at about six and a half kilohertz, which is very much audible. It's like ee! And what I was doing there is I just, uh, by changing the speed of the BBD, I swept it down and up again, so it goes ee! And I thought that was an interesting sound in its own right. It's totally not supposed to be there, but it sounds weird and interesting. So then I looped it and copied and pasted it throughout the song. So in the background of this song, you can hear this ee! And that is just the sound of the bit that you're not supposed to be able to hear in the BBD. And if only it was a more expensive, better made BBD, that wouldn't be in there. But I thought it would be a, a fun, quirky thing to, uh, after the fact, decide to make a prominent feature, not a bug, of the, uh, the music. So that I thought was kind of interesting. You can take all of the, uh, the bits that aren't supposed to be there in the tools that you're using and actually feature them prominently. So you're taking a, a rather bad cheap part of the design where it doesn't actually notch out the, uh, the clock pulse uh, and then you make that a prominent feature of the track. Okay, as uh, I'm showing Aphex Twin songs in a spectrogram, I guess I would get a lot of comments from people about my omission if I didn't include the equation track from Window Licker, where here we have uh, a face. Uh, I gather it's Apex Twin's face, it's kind of hard to tell, it looks a bit like a skull or something. Um, because this is logarithmic, it, it's uh, quite squashed, but that, that is a face right there. So, um, quite a few people talk about that. Uh, far fewer people actually talk about the more interesting sounding uh, imagery in the actual title track itself, Window Licker, on the A side. This is Window Licker, and at the end it goes pew, 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 pew. And if you look at that, that's a spiral just at the end of the track there. If you're looking at it not logarithmically, you can actually see a lot clearer that it's a spiral, but you can just about make out there's a spiral there. And I think that actually sounds a, a, a lot um, better than the face does. <laughs> Incidentally, you can get software to hide uh, pictures in sounds quite easily. Um, you, you just take any uh, picture and you can take each line off the picture based on how bright it is. You change it into uh, how loud the sine wave at that frequency is. It's in the exact opposite thing uh, as a spectrogram. Uh, I've made my own software that does that. It's quite easy to do. Here's a song I made in the late 90s, early zeros, If You Beat Me I'll Poke You. And I'm not sure if anyone ever noticed, but uh, in the middle there for the bridge, uh, there's a bit where you've got this kind of uh, loud chirpy part. That's uh, Commodore 64 that's just booted up and it's saying that it's ready for input. No one's ever told me, oh I like that bit, so I guess no one ever noticed that, but it's in there. This is another of my own tracks and you can see quite easily on this graph. Uh, this is a low pass filter with the cutoff point rising, so as you raise the low pass filter, more of the frequencies beneath it are allowed through. It's usually quite easy to spot things like acid lines uh, in spectrograms because you know they're, they're not subtle, they're quite blatant. So that's in the track where you can hear uh, a sound that's uh, slowly rising, like I swear I also uh, wrote a track once and snuck in a secret message at the top uh, that said something like if you can't hear this then 32 kilohertz is good enough. I can't remember which track that was though so I can't find it. <laughs> but one of my tracks I think has that in so that's a nice little easter egg for anyone who finds that. Oh this is uh, This Sound Cures Fascists. Uh, this was my attempt at a Ventolin style track. You've got 
uh, a nasty uh, sound. Even this sounds really high frequency. And what then happens is periodically uh, you get a bit of frequency modulation. So uh, this is a, I think it's a triangle wave. If, or maybe something that's supposed to be a sine wave, but it isn't because again, it's, it's cheap and nasty, wonderful dope fur technology, uh, which is something a bit like it. Uh, so you've got a really bright bit here. This is meant to be a fairly pure uh, waveform. Here's all the kind of copies of it higher up that aren't really supposed to be there. And then I feed probably something like a, an 808 kick drum into the CV input. So it goes and, and then when that goes in, it makes it go all over the place. So it's changing frequency really quickly. So it sweeps up and down like woo, 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 but really, really, really quickly. Uh, and it's one of those things that probably looks better than it sounds like. If you look at the actual Ventolin, um, it's completely different. <laughs>